Hi, and welcome to Red Rum Media. Thank you for listening to our brand new, in-depth podcast series called Undetected, The Disappearance of Prisma Reyes. Please make sure you subscribe to our channel to get the latest podcast episodes straight to your phone and comment below to let us know what you think about this case. As a reminder, you can also find us on all of your favorite podcast sites as well. We hope you enjoy this episode. Prisma Denise Peralta Reyes went missing from the Dallas, Texas area on Wednesday, April 17th of 2019, around 6 p.m. local time. On the morning of her disappearance, she made a few phone calls and headed to work where she had just recently taken a position at 123 Tex Auto. Shortly after, she headed to E-Bar Tex-Mex for what appears to have been a very extended lunch break with someone who she might have been rekindling a flame with. After an alleged minor altercation occurs at the bar, when she is cut off and asked to leave, she heads down the road back towards what could have been her home, the babysitter, or even her work for that matter. A few minutes after leaving the bar, there are reports that Prisma was involved in a road rage incident, but didn't stick around for the cops to show up. As we understand it, it appears she continued on her way in the same direction but ended up turning around shortly before getting on a major highway. She is later seen on surveillance video at a local apartment complex, the Olympus at Ross. Next, she is seen parking her vehicle in front of a side road on the apartment complex video footage. She then runs inside the parking garage following the entrance of another vehicle. There is at least one other instance of Prisma being seen inside the apartment garage by another female. It was reported she may have also been seen by another man in or around an elevator as well. In addition to at least one other apartment video that shows Prisma while using her cell phone in front of the elevator in the parking garage. Prisma was very active on her cell phone most of the day, up until her phone abruptly stopped making or receiving calls at 6.01 p.m. She has never been seen or heard from again. Now, first things first, this podcast may include information such as interviews, statements, police reports, videos, and more. We use this information in addition to our experience and background to provide our viewers with as much evidence and context to the cases we research. All parties are presumed innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. As always, we ask that everyone draw their own conclusions based on their own research. This is by far one of the hardest cases I've ever worked on to date. As a retired licensed private investigator, I've seen a lot, but for some reason, this case stood out to me from day one. Although I've been following this case from the very beginning, it recently became personal when I started working directly with the family. Now that the one year anniversary of her disappearance is coming up on April 17th of 2020, it's more important than ever to figure out just what happened. With every day that passes, the family of Prisma continues to seek answers in her disappearance. Prisma was just 26 years old at the time of her disappearance. But now a whole year has passed, her birthday just passed, and her whole family, especially her seven-year-old son, desperately miss her. Prisma was a young, loving mother who was trying to find her way in life. She had recently started a new job it was attempting to cut ties with those who didn't seem to fit into her future. Although we all know, not all ties are easily broken, right? Nonetheless, Prisma fought for those who she loved. While talking with friends and family, it's pretty clear and well known that Prisma may have also gotten wrapped up with some not so kind and genuine people along the way. I think that's partially why I became so invested in this case. Prisma's case also seemingly just started to disappear from the public eye. Was it because of who people thought might be involved, as they're said to be quote-unquote dangerous? And who are they? Yeah, we're going to get into that. Was it because of her past? Well, I hate to tell you, but we all have skeletons in our closet, right? Some may just have some that might be deeper and darker than others, but we're going to have to get into that in another episode because trust me this stuff gets pretty deep as far as anyone knew 
the day Prisma went missing started just like any other day. Unfortunately, that just wasn't the case. What all actually happened that Wednesday is still unknown to the public at this time. Although, we have been able to obtain some solid, concrete pieces of this puzzle. We've also tried to obtain the case file for this case, but have since been denied access to everything except for five pages. Those five pages contain the officer incident report, which took months to recover. In fact, we started the Freedom of Information Act request on January 29th, 2020. We were officially denied the rest of the file, April 2nd, 2020. And we just received word this past Friday, April 10th, 2020, that this was denied. Now some ask why we even thought obtaining this file was possible. Well, honestly, I didn't. Having experience in my fair share of public records requests of all sorts, I honestly just put in the request for the hell of it. I wanted to see what the police department might be willing to release to us a year later, especially since working with her stepfather, Dan Fuchs. But that's neither here nor there. I submitted the request and was expecting an instant denial. To my surprise, I received an estimate for her file costing $529.60. At the date of the estimate and the reissue of the estimate, there were a minimum of one body cam recording, 1,266 pages of some sort of evidence or police reports, records, filings, could be interview transcripts, etc., two CDs, and 44 DVDs in her case file. Now we know the Mesquite Police Department has quite the file for Prisma's disappearance. Was her disappearance a part of something larger? Are they just missing something when it comes to making an arrest, and at the very least her disappearance? They must know something with all of that information, right? Her family and I immediately went to work trying to obtain this file. In the meantime, we continued to pursue every avenue, interview, and lead we could obtain. So even without all of this evidence in the case file the Mesquite PD has, we started our own. I never anticipated we could get the whole file due to it being an open case, but we were never advised otherwise, so we did what we were told to do. I got to work on a GoFundMe and raise the funds with the help of our family, friends, and the online community of our Find Prisma Facebook page and group. Fast forward to today and we now have quite the file ourselves, even without PD. Although we may be lacking a few major key pieces, including Prisma, through this podcast you'll be given a very detailed look at our case over the next several months. Our goal of this podcast is to help find Prisma. We hope to raise awareness that Prisma is still missing, in addition to generating new leads in regards to her case. New episodes will be released as we are able to release this information, so please stay tuned. There will be a few links in the description box below, including the official Facebook page and group that some of her family and friends are currently active in, in addition to the Teespring link where you can purchase your fine Prisma apparel. All proceeds will go to any expenses necessary to locate Prisma, including but not limited to the reward fund set up to help generate reliable leads in locating Prisma. You can also donate directly to the family's GoFundMe, which will also be located down below. I have recently contacted the detective on this case, seeking an update or comment, but as of the date of this recording, we have not heard back yet. We will let you know when we hear more. With that being said, if you know anything, no matter how big or small, please contact Mesquite Police Department at 972 285 6336. Again, that's 972 285 6336. And or Detective Dustin Barrett at 972 216 6791. 972 216 6791. Thank you.